everything I want? I just want to share a little bit of myself. I, uh, um, thanks for the introduction. Um, I started real estate 11 years ago. But before real estate, I was a flight steward. Like, I was flying with Singapore Airlines for eight and a half years before I came to business. And this is my first business that I work for. I think what's the difference between myself and other businessmen? Because probably more passion, right? Uh, I'm very driven. At the same time, I'm probably more visionary than a lot of them. I'll just start to introduce the group before I get into the proper stuff. Right, uh, ECG has got companies that form in 2003. Right, uh, there's three core business that we're in. We are, we are in public development. Right, if you happen to see uh, East Coast, Serum Garden, Galatia, or even at um, North Side, you can see some of the developments going on. We focus a lot on landed properties. The second business that we're in, we are in property services, but we have about 500 agents with us. But at the same time, we own a valuation company. We do have about 12 valuables. We deal with banks like OCBC, UOB, Maybanks, HDB, CPF, and many other stuff. And of course, we do a lot of investment. We buy out some companies, we acquire some companies, we own some boards, we own some shares here and there. So this is a group of companies that can. So in specific, right, I started the business all three with only two staff, right, myself and my PA, and, and of course, another staff here yeah, was with me in three. In 07, we got ourselves in the Singapore Book of Records, being the fastest real estate agency. In 2010, we won the Singapore Prestige Award. Of course, in 2012, 2003, we win a number of awards. So these are some accolades that we had for the group itself. These are some awards that actually won in the group itself. I think what the work like that actually show a recognition of the group and of course the direction of the company itself. These are some projects that we built in, in Singapore. <coughs> In, in places like that. We have even built a uh, high-rise condominium in Thailand, about 800 old units uh, in Makassan, for example. So we have, like I mentioned, right, we own a property agency, we own an asset management company, we own also a project marketing company itself. I think, first and foremost, every company we had, we went through these four cycles. I think some of us have seen it before. We form, we storm, we norm, and we form. These are the four cycles that everyone went through. Even our relationship, our friendship, our business, we actually formed three sports companies. When we started our business, when we formed, things are pretty exciting. Things are very positive. Right? But when you get through your business for six to eight months or even a year or so, we definitely will go through this stage stop. The real of it. Right? A lot of us in our relationships are, wow, girlfriend, boyfriend, the first six months, very exciting. After like seven months, things stop, right? So, but the breakthrough part is the storm part. Right, and a lot of businesses cannot even go through the pin line from storm to norm. The reason because some of us get up along the way. Let me share a lot about myself when I started. When I started the business O3, I formed the business. The growth was unbelievable. Because as you know, in small businesses, the first one, two years, the growth really everyone comes to you, your business was good. But when you get you get into the business, things happen, right? Some of your staff might leave you to be your competitor. Some of the supplier will come to you and say, oh, I will increase my cost. Some of us will say that, hey, this business is not the right business. Uh, competitor will throw mud on you, find fault on you. Uh, these are things that happen in storm. But you need a lot of courage. You need a lot of passion. You need a lot of uh, commitment and conviction to bring yourself from storm to norm. Agree with it. Any one of us, in our, I mean, any one of us here, when you study or probably in academics, hey, I feel like giving up along the way. Anyone of here? Many of them. Every, almost everyone, right? We went through this. Come, can I show you? How many of you all really, how many truths say, I feel like giving up? Yeah, a lot of us, right? So actually, we went through this So we need a lot of courage, we need a lot of perseverance, right? Then we went through now. But you reach to a stage in your business or your academy or whatever you do, you feel that, hey, Everything that I do, I don't see growth, right? Because, as you know, the path of business was very steep. But you reach a norm, you don't see much growth. That is the maintenance of our business, right? That is very tough. Because at this point in time, your competitor will come to you. Let me share a little bit of FME. I think pretty, pretty familiar to everyone of us. Many years ago, there's this brand called Tong Lok. Is it Tong, Tong Le? Uh, of course, Mr. J. Right? These two businesses was 
eight, nine years ago, right, was really going on a very steep slope, <coughs> right? And they went through storm because they wanted to open up branches. They opened up maximum probably about 18, 20 branches. They can't go, they can't move on because the management team was not strong for whatever reason. Then there's another brand that just came in not too long ago, five years ago. What's the brand? Paradise. Have you heard of Paradise? One of my admin, my close friend of mine, they came in. They also went through this cycle. Right? What happened? Tongle or Crystal Jade could be normal. Today, they are still normal. They used to be performed, right? And they came back normal. And Paradise and other group itself have overtook them in numbers of transactions, in the volume, in the revenue, in the presence of whatever they, they are. Why? Because from norm to perform was also was a very thin line. Because a lot of us will give up in norm too. And especially when you get to perform, if you don't maintain high, eventually you drop to norm. So I just want to share you, it's pretty common that you, you go through the cycle from perform to norm, to storm, back to norm, and back to perform. It's pretty common. But importantly, we must admit ourselves what position are we at right now? Are we at strong? Or are we at perform? Or are we at norm? Because a lot of businessmen or a lot of us in a denial. Because we could be in storm, but we always tell our loved one or we tell our management that today we are not in storm. We are in norm. But today you are in norm. We tell people that you are in perform. <coughs> Agree with me? And you are perform. You feel that you always perform and you don't bother about improving. You don't improve a breakthrough. You still say, oh, it's okay, I'm perform. But you must understand, in this market, there's always someone that comes behind us. Agree with me? Who agrees? Raise your hand. So basically, this four cycle, I always share my management. Today, every of my department, be it my sales and marketing department, or even my franchise department, or even my development business, or even my construction business, I always ask them, where are we right now? Is it okay to be strong? Is it okay? Perfectly okay to be strong. But you must admit that today, our position is strong. Okay? Okay, can I do a small little test on yourself? Can you, can you all close your eyes? Close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. I want you to imagine today, where are you right now? Are you as strong, normal, or perform? Okay, in your relationship, in your studies, or whatever you're doing. I want you to sort out yourself. Today, are you a norm? Or are you a storm? Because a lot of us, we don't think, we don't give ourselves time to really sort ourselves. Right? Okay, let us have 10 seconds. Sort ourselves. Are we a norm? Right? Are we a storm? Or are we a perform? Or are we at storm? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And can I show ahead that how many of, how many of us here? Is that form? Form, form. How many of us here is a storm? How many of us here and norm? How many of you all have perform? Okay. Statistics show easily 65% of the crowd should be a storm. Right. 65 should be a storm. Easily. 30 odd percent should be at norm. Probably about 2 percent is at perform. You're pretty right. You look at the crowd. About 60 odd percent is what? At storm. Is it okay to be strong? Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you turn to your left and right and tell your neighbor at the left side? Today, I will be perform. Huh? Today, I will be perform. <laughs> Today you'll be perform, right? Okay? So basically, it's okay to be stopped, it's okay to be done. Because today we will be? Today we will be? Today we will be? We will be perform. Okay, so it's okay. Okay? Next. I think a lot of business we are in, we do not know. Should we charge? Should we hop? Or should we discharge? Right. Let me share myself. I'll tell a story. Right. <coughs> Many years ago, I owned an IT company called SG1 Stop. We are very sizable at one time. In Sanyang, US Sanyang, in China Sanyang. I used to have about more than 20 odd programmers with me. In Singapore, we have many staff, we deal with pro uh, the programming language. I don't know nothing about IT, but I own an IT company. So I was in this business, before we, we do we did contracts for spring, we do contracts for many other government sectors, and we do contracts with a lot of SMEs. So 
when the business was really at norm and ready to perform, we was a bit contented because, as you know, cash flow was good, right? Things was operating well. Every month we see cash flow. At one time, the business was not running well because after two years, cash flow was great. Business no contracts was being secured. And we were telling ourselves, we are at storm position. At one time, it went back to <coughs> form. Why? Because we are depleting our revenue, our, our cash flow itself. And I tell myself, should we charge, should we hop, or we should discharge? And I make the dis decision to discharge myself. Why? Because I tell myself, this business can't be my most core business. And what I did is that we sold the business away, we walked off. So, is it okay for us to sell the business away? It's alright. It's alright, right? I'll show you, I've done many businesses. You guys, some of you can Google myself. I even own the biggest fish farm in Singapore, right? In Pasir Ris. If you happen to see YouTube or sing theaters here, there's half an hour uh, video of myself in the fish farm. I also own the largest yacht chartering company in Singapore called SG Yacht. I even own the car rental company before. I, I was also a 3M applicator that polished cars before. I do many businesses. But the last five, six years, I've sold almost all my business except for property related business. So I just want to share that every one of us here should ask yourself, in any time, should we charge, should we hold, or should we discharge? Because a lot of decisions we make, we always tell ourselves, every decision we make is always charge, 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 charge. As very Asian and ourselves. Everything we do, we want charge, 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 charge. We never, we will never hold, we will never discharge. I think this is one of the mistakes that we always do. Always do. Agree with me. Who agree that every time they do everything, they will say chat 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 chat. Raise your hand. A lot of them. Right? Even the relationship. You will not stop, you will not hot or you will start. You say, I'm not wrong, wrong, wrong. You are wrong also in quarrel. Why? Because you always charge. Right? End of the day, you know that you you, 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 you did not right. You always call the body hot. You don't call each other. Then you discharge. You prefer the relationship. But I think we must understand our situation. Not all situations have to be charged. Even myself, I was I was sharing with <coughs> some of us here. I just back from Malaysia this morning. Uh, this afternoon, probably I reached Singapore about five. I was having a meeting. I, I left Singapore about eleven. I was in JB doing a deal. Uh, I was doing a deal making. Right. I was thinking at that time, I was charging very hard because I'm die die. I'm gonna talk on that. So I was charging so hard that. They knew the essence that I want this piece of land. Why? Because that was the opportunity. Do you think every land that we go is all charged? Should we do it? No. Some of the land we go, it's okay. We don't want it, it's also okay. So we do what? We do the hot position. And sometimes we even discharge. Why? Because after doing the due diligence, we feel that this piece of land might not be good for us. Agree with me? So cannot always charge, charge, charge. I think there's three things that you do. You pay after me first. We what? Charge. We, what's that called? We charge. We what? What's the next one? Oh. We hot and we discharge. Okay, so these three things that I will always ask myself to do. Next, we look at this two, one and two. Okay, when I started business, I would prefer number one. Why? Because I grew my business very fast. Right, like F1. I will not stop. But what very wrong? My car rental business, I was grew from one car to 52 car within two years. Is it a lot? It's quite a lot, don't you? I have one yacht to three yachts. Even one fishery, I got about 80,000 space, GFA, cross floor area of the fishery. The largest fishery. So we grew very, very fast. But I realized one thing in our businesses, or even a lot of the businesses. We grew that fast, when things happen, what happened? When things happen, what happened? They will slide down to what? Form. They slide down to form. They do not have a platform <coughs> to step on. So after I realized for 10 years in my business, I tell myself, I will go for one. Do I reach the destination eventually? Do I reach my goal? For sure. But do I take a longer time? Yes, for sure. But do you think if anything good do happens, I have a platform to step on? Agree with you. So if I into business, I will never go for platform two. I will go for option one because I could grow slowly, but I'm very sure that I will not go slow form. Can I have a, can you can you illustrate one business in Singapore that are option two and within two years they close up? Come.
any business the last 10 years you have saw? Bubble tea. Yes, you're right. You have seen black pearl, right? You have seen pop out cha, cup, each a cup, whatever cup that you're talking about. It went very high up, and what happened? And it became no cup. Right? <laughs> so they came down and they got nothing on it. So bubble tea is one of them. What's next? $1.99. Ah, $1.99, right? Also one of them. They grew at fast outlet all over. And what happened? They closed up also. <clears throat> what? Another one. The 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 what's that low tea, the, the, the bread, the bread, what is that bread? The papa. The coffee bread, right? The coffee bread. Also, right? They grew everywhere, the coffee bread, and what happened? They also closed up also. So I'm sharing that in business, you must ensure that that is the step. <coughs> Even in, in, in your things that you do, who agree that they are on path number two? Listen, everything you guys do, you're shh. No? Zero? Can't be. Anyone here? Thinks that everything they do, they will always go one. Uh, one, one. Okay, who will do number one? Raise your hand. One, two. How about the rest? Who will, the rest will do number two, right? <laughs> okay, can I show your hand? Come. We do some surveys together, okay? Who will place on option number one if they do their things? Come. Okay, who will do number two? Raise your hand. It's okay. So I advise that go for number one. Because number two is pretty dangerous because in this market cycle to go a down slope is pretty easy because the market is very competitive okay so i will go for two one but not two and you look at i i want to share about the six factor of business success this six factor that i i see first we need a strategy right do you think that anything we do we need a strategy a lot of business we are lucky i tell you i tell something we are not lucky because we have a vision, we have a strategy. Number two, you also need a financial means. A lot of times, Eric, I've got big dreams, but I'm not financially strong. Is it okay to do business? My answer is you can. I'll show you why later on. Of course, you need the courage, right? You need the courage. And a lot of times, Eric, from a flight steward to be a developer, is it a great change? Definitely, right? Because from a flight steward and to a developer, of course, the cash flow, the, the whole entire organization has changed. The, 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 the things that you do, and no one has taught me that. So you need a lot of courage. I'll show you what the courage is on. Of course, do you think it's network? Do you agree that network is equal to network? What's the network is equal to your network? So no, that's, if every point you need to network, because the network is equal to network. Eventually, do you think you need a team? Do you think the success of ECG is because of me? No, it's my team. But ultimately, you need a vision. Okay? So these are the six factors of business success that I, I form. Number one, I talk about strategy. Strategy, I will have GRE. Okay, what's G stand for? I'll go for growth. Right. There's two parts of growth that I'll look at. One is internal growth, one is external growth. What do you mean by internal growth? It's internally in in-house in ECG or something. Do you agree that in internal department we also need to grow? Do you think we need to invest in our staff? For sure, right? We need to invest our staff, we need to invest our General manager, we need to invest our sales, sales person, training and whatever. So we need to invest internally. Do you think that we need to also invest our growth externally? For sure. Your brand, right, your presence, your market share, are these are, are these growth? They are growth. Am I right? So I will strategize in G, growth, internal and external growth. Of course, research. Do you think research is very important? You can't build a house and just sell like that. You must understand what the needs of the market need. Be it a landed with three and a half story, a landed with leaf without leaf, a landed with marble floor without marble flooring. I think that's very important, right? So a research, you got to define business opportunity and problems. Do you agree that every business has a problem? Today, if you build landed property in, okay, I will say, if 15 years ago, you built condominiums in Malaysia, it's pretty hard to sell because a lot of Malaysians would prefer a landed home. But today, is it okay to build a condominium in Malaysia? Yes, people are looking at high rise building itself. So you want to look and define your business opportunity and your problem itself. Next, you must make sure that ideas. Do you agree that ideas actually give us revenue? Right? Let me share one good thing that I did for my landed property when I built it. When I sell my landed property, a few things that I emphasize. One is affordability. I must ensure that I don't price extremely high. I'll price it in a way whereby affordable, of course, I must have the margin. Number two, 
What's my main factor is that I ensure that there's space planning. Because a lot of developers, what they do is that they build small. Making more unit, they build small. But I emphasize a lot on living room area. I emphasize a lot on master bedroom. <coughs> so this is one of my main factors. Of course, some of the land that we built, we also input a leaf in. So when we build a leaf in, is it a winning, is it a winning formula? For sure. Why? Because we always design at least five rooms. Why? Because we are catering for a two-tier family. So of course, you need some ideas, right? Ultimately, you must monitor your performance. But you must ensure that what's the market share you have. That last year, we built about 39 lands. Right? So ask yourself, where are we right now? Are we, the, are we dominating the landed property? Yes, we are. Are we pulling away? We ask ourselves. Thanks. Next, we must un understand our business, our business process. How fast we build. Some of developers could build 8 months. Some developers do 14 months. Some developers with 18 months. Are we fast enough? Right? Ask yourself, are, are the speed fast enough? Ultimately, you must take out the box. Right? In 4 years ago, when I was a developer then, I started my business. I mean, I started development six years ago. Four years ago, I went into a sector called landed property. Right? When I went to landed property, some of the developers like Fragrance, Oxley, is very, why do you get to landed development? Whereby we do high-rise building, reduce condominium in, 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 in places like Tolo Kurao, Sarangu Gardens, and many other areas out there. And landed property will build one, 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 one. But I have a strong vision. I tell myself, no. Because the landed property will have more upside in the revenue. Because the price are still reasonable. And what I did is that I think out of the box. I said, I'll do this differently. Because I got less com competitor, number one. Number two, I feel that I can dominate a certain market share. True enough, four years later, price of the landed property have went up tremendously. The growth of landed have went even more than the condominium. So I think this is one of the enterprise that we had we think on the box as a management itself. So these are some strategy that we, we do, right? Second, financial means. When I started business, I tell myself, Eric, to be a developer, you need a lot of money. Yes, for sure, you need to, right? But as a start, as, I ask myself, anyone start small, agree? So what we need to do is that if you really do have financial means, you can get into, you can get an investor, you can get a sponsorship, you can get a loan, you can what you're saving on capital to actually gain your financial needs. And I'll show you, even myself, at times we bid for a very big piece of land. Okay? And what we do is that 100 odd million dollars, we can't treat ourselves. What we do is that we look for partners. Mr. A partner, Mr. B partner, Mr. C partner. Three of us consult them together and we actually own that piece of land. Is it okay? It's okay. Right? So don't, don't give up because hey, financial needs, I can't make it, means I, I can't do my business. Next. I think the importance of taking risk. I think risk is something that a lot of us would not want to take. Anyone here would take very high risk kind? Raise your hand. One, two, three. Anyone of here would not take risk? How about the rest of them? Huh? Moderate risk, or you're not sure? Okay, I think, in short, I think risk is something that's our appetite. I think the more we do, the more confident we are, the more risk we will take. I think that is also a very high risk because the confidence level exceeded and it could be very good. So I think the importance of taking risk is important. I want to share that how I make my money to be a developer. Because a lot of them say, hey, you started as a real estate agent in 03, how could you A, B, C, D, and you can another <coughs> 04, 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 12, be an 8 years agent, I can be a developer. Not true. I started investing in 06. I bought shops, I bought offices, I bought condominiums, I kept. In 06 to 07 and 08, these three years, I bought many properties. And of course, as you know, the last, this golden years was a very good year whereby a lot of Singaporeans flip property. Tao, you know Tao? Uh, they flip today, they buy, they sell tomorrow, today they buy, they sell tomorrow, today they buy, they sell. Very common. And I did it for a good two years. At one time, I owned 33 properties. I was featured in papers. And what do you do? Why? Because we buy, we flip, we buy, we flip. So do you think at the time, I take very high risk? Extremely high risk, trust me. Extremely, okay? And do you think that, which business got no risk? It's definitely no risk. Right? As long as you have business, there's risk, okay? So of course, the importance of taking risk. But I'm not asking today, you leave your you leave your school and go and take some risk. <laughs> Not true, huh? Okay, so there's always risk. Okay? Next. Of course, 
As I mentioned, you've got to increase your network. Network is your network. You must increase your business network because when your network, you've got more opportunities. At the same time, you also increase your profile. Why I'm here today? Well, I'm here today is not because, I, of course, I want to increase my network. At the same time, I want to share the success of ECG and, of course, the group itself. So, I think networking is very important. If today you want to be a businessman, right, and you keep staying at home, <coughs> you think of business will come to your door and knock. Can I do business with you? No way. You've got to go out on a door to make sure that you network. Really. And I started as a real estate agent in 2003. Do you know that I made myself a point for two good years that I have a pocket on my left. On Monday to Friday, I will have 20, 15 name cards, one five. Okay, 15 name cards. And on weekend, I will have 25 name cards. I must make sure I give up my name cards before I get back home. And even now, I keep practicing it. Okay, I don't know how many name cards I have, but I sh I'm very sure I have more than 15 name cards. Okay, so what I do, I used to stay in this. I'm staying in this. So at times, when you, you give up name cards, you still left with five, you left with eight name cards. What I do when I pump my petrol, I say, Uncle, Uncle, I give you this. Look how Uncle, you give up for me. Yeah? <laughs> These are some shortcuts I'm taking. Okay. So I want to show you, even today, you must keep networking. Okay? Next. You must make sure that you must have a team. Right? You must have a teamwork within yourself. Right? You must ensure that you have a good start. You must make sure that your, your team is really good for you. I think teamwork is very important. Have you saw a CEO that don't even... I always tell my staff, if you want to hate a department, you must work 200% more than your staff. Then your staff will do 100%. A lot of CEOs say, I do 100%, you expect your staff to do 100%. <coughs> no way. The staff will do 50%. It's always 50% this time. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no <way. laughs> so, even myself, right, my staff was telling me, Eric, you run that fast, we got to catch up with you. Yes, because if you're always slow, you think your staff will be slower. Say, Ami staff, your sergeant is relaxed, you're also very relaxed. Right, your captain is very on, you're also very on. Right, so, always have a good thing, okay? Next, you must make sure that you are vision. I think visionary is very important, but you must make sure that you set a goal for your staff, your department, your company, whatever, right? Be very visionary and know what you want to do. Choose your goal. I think all of us here have a goal. Agree with me? You guys definitely have a goal. You guys also know what you want to do. Choose your goal. Right? Don't give up the <coughs> way, okay? Ultimately, how to bring a company to global, right? I think a few things, you must stay informed. But number two, choose the right country that you want to spend. Of course, participate in social network and have your knowledge in your legal, legal matters. Okay, number one, what do you stay focused? You must make sure that in my business, you must make sure that you read papers often. You must know what's going on in the market, what's the price. You must be very price sensitive of the rules and regulation up and coming, the heat that the government is giving you. You must also make sure that information on the internet is being captured, right? Some comments are still a bit different. Right, conduct a business research and you must stay informed. Right? To me, this is called scout. Repeat after me, this is called scout. You must be a scout. You must make sure what's going on in the market. You can't be so high up and don't even know what's going on. Right? Your staff tell you, hey, this, you know there's one construction company just called that not too long ago? Odin, right? Yeah, right. Why? Because of the CAO and the management team was not intact in the ground works. Right? They do not count deeply. Right, like what's going on in the marketplace? Why? Because value has increased every July. Right, steel costs have increased, construction costs have increased, and they sign a contract. And when they sign a contract, cost goes up, what do they do? There will be a negative, books, right? They can't sustain. So you must make sure that you stay on such form. Next, you must explain, expand your knowledge in your legal framework. Why? Because like countries that we expanded in Malaysia, in Japan, right, even in Bangkok, or even right now in Australia, we must make sure that the legal framework can contain, contain rules that we want to do. Because there's some time, like for example, right, in Malaysia, or even in, uh, for example, in Japan, when we have a foreign tax, they tax us about close 40% of my corporate tax. That means every one dollar you earn, what? You pay 40 cents to the government. Is it a lot? No? Extremely a lot, right? So of course, we have to make sure that we structure it well, we must make sure that we don't pay so much tax, right? So, <laughs> so the legal matters is very, very important. Yeah, I'm not asking you to run away from tax. Tax must pay, but don't you pay so much. <laughs> yes. You make sure that you have a business law, not sure check with your, all your professors, they are very clever. Okay? So make sure that you have legal numbers. Okay, next. 
you must also search the right country. Today, can you build villa in Madais? You can't, no one will buy, right? Right, so you, people, can you build big bungalows right now in Brazil? You can't also, right? So you must make sure that you do a research, make sure that demand and supply is there. Why today, so many of them is buying Japan? There must be a reason. As you know, ECG have done a lot of Japan development. Over the weekend, this weekend, we also have some regions, we are marketing a lot of Japan and we are selling like 16, 17 units within a month. Why? Because they knew that Japan is up and coming. The Olympics, the tax, the construction costs, many other reasons are increasing. So you must make sure you choose the right country that you want to expand yourself. You can't expand a place that you don't even know there's a demand and supply, right? Don't expand because you need, you just, oh, I got a network of 50 countries. But how many 50 countries could make money, right? Next. You must be sure that you are uh, social media network, Twitter. I think that's very important because that's how you communicate with the consumer. 15 years ago, no one believed in website. Today, all companies minimum need a website. Agree, don't agree? Yeah. When I started business in Sears, as a real estate agent 10 years ago, I formed my first website. My boss, my ex-boss turned crazy. Who will see website today? You sell property, not sell IT. But today, he's He's spending so much money in his website, right? So I think social network is very important. Okay. Ultimately, I have my book here, right? Uh, you don't get the copy, <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's about property, but of course later the panel I will share more if you have more questions because I do not know what you already want to hear or learn from us. Right? Uh, I'll take questions on ground later on. Okay. With that, I wish you all the best. Thank you.